I can't figure out who I'm more upset with, Emmanuel Acho or the critics who have gatekept him into an apology for his mild, mild criticism of Angel Reese. Who, who, who am I more upset with, Emmanuel Acho for folding or Matt Barnes and Ryan Clark and all the other gatekeepers that ripped this guy for nothing and then exposed this man as completely emasculated. I, I, I don't know who I'm more upset about, but that's what we're going to talk about today. Buckle up. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. Start pounding that like and subscription button if you're watching over YouTube. Hand us that five-star rating if you're listening over Apple. Uh, run to blazetv.com backslash fearless. Get your Blaze TV subscription right now. That's the best thing you can do to support this show is subscribe to the Blaze. Do that right now. I implore you. And uh, let me thank Good Ranchers, because this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Good Ranchers. Fall in love with beef, chicken, seafood all over again by subscribing to GoodRanchers.com. Use my promo code FEARLESS to get $150 worth of free chicken wings for a year, plus $20 off with your subscription. Be good to Good Ranchers. They're being good to us. You got to eat. You might as well eat with a company that supports us and our values and allows me and you to have the conversation we're gonna to have today. Uh, Steve Kim's going to join me uh, at some point in today's show, but <sighs> I'm, I'm so upset. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm being completely authentic. It's not a gimmick. It's not, it's not a, I, all I wanted to do today when I woke up is like, hey, women's final four tonight. My girl, Caitlin Clark is gonna be out there. Uh, trying to get back to the national title game uh, against this Paige Becker, who's you know a little overhyped in my view against UConn. That's all I want to do is enjoy that. And and the whole idea I told the crew uh, yesterday, hey, we're just going to preview uh, the national I mean, the, the national semifinal games tonight or game because no one really cares about South Carolina and who are they playing? NC State, whoever they're playing. Uh, no one cares about. No one's going to watch that tatted, weave, fake eyelash uh, disaster. But <clears throat> everybody is excited to see Caitlin Clark do her thing. And so that, that, that my whole day, that's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do today. Just preview that game. It's going to start shortly after the end of this show. But this Emmanuel Acho situation, holy cow. Holy cow, I've never seen anything like the way they have publicly emasculated Emmanuel Acho, the FS1 a host. They've completely emasculated this man in front of everybody. They've dog walked him in front of everybody. They made, I said it over Twitter, they made this man grab a belt loop, and for some of you that are not old enough, or, or not streetwise enough, uh, but <laughs> years ago there was a, a famous show called Scared Straight, and it was about a bunch of bad high school kids that they took to a prison, Rawway State Prison, I believe, in New Jersey, and the inmates there scared them straight, and they talked about, like, hey, you're going to be in here, and some dude's going to make you grab his belt loop and walk around because you're going to be his girl. And that's what these guys have done to Emmanuel Acho. They made him grab a belt loop because he had some mild criticism of Angel Reese. So let me start with the foundation of this. And, and at some point, I'm going to get to talking about Caitlin Clark, but I got to handle this Emmanuel Acho situation first because it's important. It ties into everything we've been talking about this week. It ties into everything I was talking about yesterday, about this matriarchal culture that we have and these gatekeepers that are policing black people and policing black men in particular and policing men in particular. We're seeing it in real time with this Acho situation. So let me give you the context. Let's start 
with Emmanuel Archo's original take, I believe it's shot number two. This is what Emmanuel Archo had to say about Angel Reese after she got up there boo-hooing, after I get death threats and I've been sexualized. Ah! And, and Emmanuel Acho appropriately called her out. Play the clip. I'm about to give a gender neutral, racially indifferent take. Now, if you want to say, well, Acho, cater your take based upon gender. Acho, cater your take based upon race. I will understand that. But I'm about to give a gender neutral, racially indifferent take. Angel Reese, you can't beat a big, big bad wolf, but mm. then kind of cry like Courage the Cowardly Dog. Mm. Because if you want to act grown, which she has, if you want to get paid like you grown, which you are, if you want to talk to grown folks like you grown, which you did post game when you told a coach for an opposing team, watch your mouth. If you want to tell people, get your money up, then post game when you take an L, you just got to take it on the chin. Nobody mourns when the villain catches an L. And Angel Reese, you have self-proclaimed to be the villain. Shout out to you because you were the second best basketball player on the court and it was not close. Outside of Caitlin Clark, it was you. 17 and 20, dog, showed up. Biggest game, second biggest game of your career. Absolute dog, but you can't under any circumstance go to the podium and now try to ask for individuals to give you sympathy. No one has sympathy for the villain. Mm -hmm. You painted the bullseye on your back. Why are you surprised when people shoot at you? Mm -hmm. So if you want to act grown, if you want to pose grown, if you want to talk grown, if you want to talk to grown folks grown, then you got to take the L like you grown. Because what frustrated me is when you want to be the villain, but you want to hope for sympathy like a hero. Preach. Preach. <clears throat> Emmanuel Acho just nailed it there. And I say this sincerely with no animus towards Emmanuel Acho. Stand your ground, brother. Ten toes down on both feet. Stand your ground. Don't let these gatekeepers buck break you. Don't let them turn you into broke buck mountain because that's what they're doing. Emmanuel, they just broke you in front of everybody on social media. You said something strong and accurate and correct, and you provided some grace and mercy in there. You didn't obliterate this woman. And now you let a couple of simps, Matt Barnes and Ryan Clark and a handful of these angry black women break you in front of everybody. Why? And, and this is how, this is why I call them simps. Cause look who they had smoke for. Someone they knew they could break. And, and Acho, I, I, I promise you, I don't dislike you. I don't have any jealousy issues. I'm not sitting there, oh, he's hosting Speak for Yourself and that used to be my show. That ain't got nothing to do with it. I was, you were standing tall and said something real. And I know that's not allowed in corporate media. But, but you folding like this only emboldens them. And so now you got to watch your tongue. You can't say what you really think about anything. Because one of these buck breakers is going to call you out. Notice, Acho, who they didn't call out. Like, everybody can smell the buck that can be broken. And so that's who they went after. And you hopped on the phone with Ryan Clark and t talking about how wise Matt Barnes is. I'm about to play the clip, but I just want to provide a bit more context before I show y'all Emmanuel Acho backpedaling and having his back broken. Have, show, he got bent over by these buck breaking simps. But I want to give you a bit more context because I want to want you to watch Shady McCoy and James Jones say the exact same thing as Emmanuel Acho, but they ain't got no smoke for them. How come? Isn't that interesting? Let's play SOT number one, James Jones and Shady McCoy talking about Angel Reese on the very same show with Emmanuel Acho. No smoke for them. Play the clip. So for me, 
Number one, when you did that, you brought all this attention to yourself, which is cool. Angel Reese has been a blessing to girls basketball. People yes, tune has. in to girls basketball to watch her. And she's brought a lot of eyes to women's basketball. Number one, by the way she plays, but number two, by the way she's been acting. It's more of that. And when you act like that, number one, people want to see you lose. True. Correct. When True. you act like that, it's Come some on. people that want to see you win, but most most of the people want, to see, want to see you lose. Thank you. I think about the Floyd Mayweathers. You were going to pay for his fight, but 90% of the people are saying for the fight to see him lose. lose. Thank you. Yes. Because him lose. the way he talked in, Preach, in James. interviews, because the way he showboated um, in, in the ring, all of that, people wanted to see Floyd lose. So for me, Angel Reese has done so much for the game of basketball. But you have brought a lot of attention on yourself. After this game, if they would have won, Ooh, she would not have yeah. came out and Ooh, been crying yeah. at the podium like this. So for me, I feel like what? what you feeling, I don't care about you sharing it with the public. I just think this wasn't the right time because you've been such the villain. You can't jump up there right after the game and do this. Now, if you would have waited a couple weeks or whatever or did that with your teammates, your coach or whatever, that's all good. But you cannot be the super villain like they are saying, giving people L's, waving people bye-bye because you have brought that. You said in your own interviews, we dogs over here. This is how Instead we do it in LSU. They right. do it in TikToks. They do it in all that. And I'm for it. But you got to be able to accept the and, and I think that this, comes with, especially after you lose I game. think all the attention that she's really getting is from the things that she's doing outside of I'm basketball. She's a baller, because, though, too, though. I mean, I hear you, right? Yeah. But if, if I talked about Caitlyn or I talked about Juju, her, they games is on another level where they're going to do their own talking. So they got the same attention yeah. from their game yeah. compared to Angel Reese. More of hers is just the stuff that she's doing. Because she's a, I think she's a good player. I don't think she's nothing special like them other girls. Do we, can we all agree on that? Uh, she ain't Juju or Caitlyn. Ain't even close. Ain't even, but what I'm saying, but she got the same amount of hype. Yeah. And why you think that Maybe is? More. Maybe more. You get what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying about her. And I will say this, though. So I don't know if we got another block or not, but can we go to that coach, the head coach? Mm. Are we waiting to that? Wait, we'll get there. Okay. So, these guys, James Jones, Shady McCoy, kept it 100. Now, again, the, Shady doesn't fully know what he's talking about. Angel Reese is six foot three. Uh, Caitlin Clark is six foot. Uh, Juju Watkins is six foot two. He hasn't watched much basketball. That They're all being forced to talk about this without having watched much of it. But he's 1,000% accurate. Anybody that watches Angel Reese play, yeah, she's 6'3", and she can get some put-back shots, but there's nothing special about her. That's why when she's going off into the WNBA, and there's all kinds of questions about you know, what part of her game is going to convert to the WNBA when there's enough size to deal with her. Yeah, maybe she'll be a rebounder and a defender, but we're not counting on very many buckets because she's not skilled. She's not that good. And all of her attention comes from taunting Caitlin Clark. Without the taunt, she's nothing. And everybody knows it. But notice, Ryan Clark and Matt Barnes and all these other people, when they decided to come for somebody, which buck can be broken? Don't let that be your reputation, Emmanuel. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to, I don't have any anim. These guys have animus towards you. They're jealous of you. They're mad. They're still mad at you for buddying up with Oprah Winfrey and, and creating some, what they're, <laughs> what they're doing, Ocho, Acho, is they're saying you, you ain't about nothing. You don't deserve this platform. Ryan Clark is on the phone with you and scolding you, and Matt Barnes is on the uh, scolding you over the internet or whatever, because they're saying, man, this dude had a cup of coffee in the NFL. He ain't really about nothing. Why are they paying him this money? Why is Oprah paying attention to him? Why did he get to be the host of The Bachelor? He don't deserve this. That, that's, they're coming at you because you're intelligent, far more intelligent than them, and they're jealous of the opportunity that you got. And they said, but they said, you know what? We can break this dude, because ain't no street in him. His backbone isn't strong. We can break this buck. Because, again, where's the smoke for James Jones and Shady McCoy, who said the exact same thing? Shady McCoy called her out. She ain't that good. 
No smoke for them. Acho, stand your ground, man, or they will be passing you around cell block to cell block. This is embarrassing. I want to play you the clip of this man praising this group of idiots, this group of predators for reprimanding him. This is, this is the most embarrassing video I think I've ever seen in the history of sports talk television. This big, grown, muscular man backpedaling because a couple of clowns had some criticism for him. Play the clip. I just want to say a quick thank you um, to everyone who has respectfully uh, reprimanded me and uh, offered brilliant opinions on the Angel Reese conversation. I do not believe there is any one way to think about things, but thank you to the Ryan Clarks, the Essence Atkinses, the Bozema St. John's, um, the Trellas, the, the different individuals who is publicly and privately um, just giving me good wisdom, good feedback, uh, good, good discernment. Um, I understand. I understand. I understand. I think life is all about understanding. And so I just want to applaud those publicly, you watching, and those privately who have respectfully, the operative word there being respectfully, who have respectfully reprimanded me. Matt Barnes, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly wise words. Um, so I thank all of you all for that. I do not stand on a hill saying that I am right and you are wrong. I simply stand on a place saying, hey, this is what I believe. What do you believe? Let's listen to one another and construct a collective belief. So love to everybody who's respectfully reprimanded me. And I appreciate it so, so, so very much. Thank you all for that. Acho, I, I get what you're doing. I I'm going to translate Acho and what he's really thinking and feeling. He, he, he's, he thinks he's being clever here. And so he and his brother, his brother Sam, I think works for ESPN, also played in the NFL. Th these guys are, are some sort of African descent. that they, they weren't actually born here. Their heritage isn't there. But, but I'm telling you, what Acho is thinking is, man, I'm smarter than these dudes. And they're insecure about my intelligence. So let me put out a video and, and throw these guys some flowers. Oh, Matt Barnes, incredibly, incredibly wise. And let me tell you, he, he thinks he's going to make peace with them by playing nice. I told you, you're dealing with idiots. You will not make peace with them through being nice. Peace comes through strength. That's the only thing that they respect. The only thing. Because they don't have the brain power to even understand the type of logic and, and the type of, they're, they're not fair, they're not attached to any set of ethics or morality. And I know Ryan Clark plays the role like, you know, he's some church go, and look, he does go to church, but clearly he's going to the wrong church, as much racial idolatry as he's filled with. Sure, all these little fake, inauthentic videos he puts out trying to position himself as the most thoughtful guy in television. And Acho, I know you can see right through it and see, like, man, these dudes are insecure about my intelligence. Let me tell them how smart they are, and then they'll like me, and then they'll respect me. No. They're laughing at you behind your back. There's a reason why they didn't go after Shady McCoy and James Jones. Because Shady McCoy and James Jones would have stood their ground and told them dudes, <laughs> get it how you live. Th there's a reason why these dudes don't let my name come out of their mouth. And it's not, I'm a big, fat, old man. They can beat me up. But they know I'm not scared. And they know I'm not going to back down. And <laughs> Acho, you're not going to get peace with these guys through playing nice. The only thing they understand is strength. And that's the time we're in right now. There's a group, of, this, this is pervasive throughout American culture. It's not limited to race, 
but there are a group of idiots running around that people are trying to make peace with through niceness and through compromise. And all they understand is strength. Oh, Antifa and Black Lives Matter, if we just play nice and tell them what they want to hear. No, if you're not ready to smack those idiots down, if you're not willing to tell the National Guard, the police or whatever, bring your ass out here and burn down another building. And, and we're going to open fire on your ass. If you're not willing, don't expect any peace from them. They're playing a game. This, they're breaking bucks all over this country. I tell you, you don't have to be one of them. James Jones, Shady McCoy, they're not one of them. They get to say what they want. You just got gate kept by two idiots. I want to play you the Matt Barnes clip, and I want you all, the listeners, see. Can, can you hear the brilliance, this incredible, incredible wisdom that Matt Barnes is unspooling here? See if, because... Acho says he can. He lies to Matt Barnes, and Matt Barnes knows he ain't said nothing wise. He just knows he spotted a punk in his mind. Are you a punk? Play the Matt Barnes clip. Just saw the take uh, my brother Emmanuel Acho made about Angel Reese on Fox Sports. Angel Reese, you can't beat a big, big bad wolf, but mm. then kind of cry like Courage the Cowardly Dog. I like Acho, but I think he missed the ball on this one. The media made Angel Reese the villain, just like they made Kayla Clark, the America's sweetheart. I don't think Angel Reese said, hey, I want to be the villain. I think she ran with the title. And as a former villain, I know how that goes. Like, she ran with it. I was a villain at one point. So she's like, they're going to use it, try to use this against me. I'm, I'm going to use it to my benefit. But I think the one thing you can't debate is her game and the numbers she puts up and her talent. <clears throat> and it's weird that everyone has an issue with her talking shit or her even crying in the post press conference. But don't talk enough about her game, I feel. Like she's damned if she does, damned if she don't. She gets criticized for talking shit. She gets criticized for crying. But if you think about it, Acho, it's her last college game. She's going to the league. So she had a great run at LSU, captivated the world, helped change really the, the, the viewership in, in women's basketball. And obviously there was other women that helped with that. But Angel Reese was a, a big part of that. So, of course, after a tough loss, she's going to kind of reflect and be emotional. And you're a former athlete. You know that. So to say that she can't cry or or, or she has to because the media labeled her, she has to be a, a thug all the time or the villain all the time, because that shit ain't that shit ain't true. You guys have a problem when she talks shit. You guys have a problem when she gets emotional and, and cries like you guys have a problem with her just being emotional, which is crazy. Everybody's emotional. She just plays with on her sleeve. Similar to Draymond Green. It's crazy. I've never seen a female, first of all, get this much just hate, constant hate. People are constantly hating. I feel like it's hate. Now she talks shit. Yeah, she plays to the edge. Yeah, that's okay. That's what made that's what made all of us start watching college basketball again. And Caitlin Clark shooting from half court and, and all these talented women. But they that, that that's their game. That's what they do. Like, why do we have such a problem with it when it's women, but men are out here and it's not an issue? Dude's been talking shit and been crying after losses, snot nosed, teary eyed. But whenever she does it, it's such an issue. And I, I just think it's kind of weird to me, man. But y'all carry on. There's no logic there. There's no facts there. There's no wisdom there. That, that's a big dumb jock pretending to be smart. And you know it. Don't fall for it. Don't play his game. I, I want to walk you through just some facts here. Oh, anytime Angel Reese does anything, if she talks spit, or if she cries, she can't win. Angel Reese has been relevant in women's college basketball in a major way twice. The only time there's been major conversation, well, I'm going to give it a third. I just thought of the third one. Three times Angel Reese has been relevant. And it ain't got nothing to do with on the court with her performance as a basketball player. There's been three times she's been relevant. Once, when she taunted Caitlin Clark after the game, in the national title game. Angel Clark made herself relevant, and she got blowback for that because we hadn't ever seen that. I'm just sorry. We hadn't seen someone win 
a national title, a Super Bowl, an NBA title. We hadn't seen anybody win reach the highest level of team achievement and their first thought be, hey, I'm going to spend the next seven to ten seconds chasing around my opponent and taunting them. It had never been done. Someone showed me the tape. Everybody quit lying. Show, you can't find it. Take title game. You can't find it anywhere where someone wins a game and spends the next 7 to 10 to 12 seconds running around to taunt their opponent who had done nothing to them. It's unprecedented. When people win a game, they, oh, I won this game with these other girls or these other teammates and my coach. Let me go celebrate with them. That's their natural instinct. So that's the first time she's been relevant. The second time there's been any major conversation about Angel Reese. She started this year off getting suspended by the LSU basketball program and Kim Mulkey. And people talked about what did she do? And Kim Mulkey has protected her and has never told people what uh, Angel Reese did to get suspended. But she was relevant then. More bad behavior. She did something that warranted a coach that clearly likes her and clearly supports her and clearly needs her. She did something that caused that coach to suspend her. That's the second time. And then the third time Angel Reese has been relevant is when she loses the game and, 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 and goes to the press conference. Oh, God, I got death threats, and you just don't know how bad it's been. And everybody talks about her. If I went to a fourth time, people talked about her. It's when she yelled at the UCLA coach, talking about, uh, watch your mouth. No one has ever, hey, let's put together a highlight package of Angel Reese dominating a basketball game. Let's show those highlights because sports fans, and let's all talk about the night that she put up 48 points and 25 rebounds and led an upset of South Carolina. Hadn't happened. No one talks about her game. She wants attention, and she gets it with bad behavior. It's the oldest trick in the book. Children have been doing it for centuries. Oh, I want attention. Let me act up and act out. Matt Barnes pretending like, oh, I was a villain. When, Matt? When, when you were hopping in cars to go drive across town to beat up Derek Fisher? Nobody cared about you in the NBA. You didn't even average 10 points. Steven Jackson said no one that didn't average more than double figures in the NBA needs to talk about basketball, except I'll make this exception for uh, Becky with the good hair, Matt Barnes. Matt, you just weren't that relevant. You weren't Dylan Brooks. You just weren't that relevant in the NBA. You, just like Angel Reese, only got attention for acting up and acting out on the court and off the court. There's no wisdom here. There's just lies and distortions. And someone's going, oh, I smell Badussi. And I'm sorry for saying it, but that's what he thinks, Acho. And this is what punks do. They find a a bigger punk to jump on and make everybody think that they're bad. And they got you. It's so bad, CNN rolled out Kari Champion to stomp on you. Acho, you got, you got little girls coming out of the closet to jump on you on national TV, man. No, no, no. Don't allow this. This is not the look you want. Here's Play Kari Champion. Joining me now, sports journalist and CNN contributor, 
Carrie Champion. So, look, first of all, <laughs> I she is now going to the WNBA. So she is right. not, she lost a game, but she is not a loser by any stretch of the imagination. But why that reaction? You know, I, well, first of all, I think that I want to give just a little context. Her saying that she was a self-proclaimed villain was based off an article that someone had wrote about the team. And she said, fine, I'll be your villain. And she's 21 years old. And I'm going to keep saying that. She's 21 years old. The maturation of this young lady, we haven't even begun to see or began to see, rather. And I think it's unfair for us to say this is who she is. Emmanuel Acho decided to give this critique. And if he was really, truly trying to help her, he would have called her up and said, listen, this is what this looks like. He would not have went on a show to say that he's giving a gender neutral, race neutral take and make it about her. It's impossible to do. But she's also talking about, I mean, it's not, it's not just about people calling her names. She's talking about death threats. She's talking about- She's had a tough time. At, and this was before this moment. Well, she so, was even younger at that point. I think, unfortunately, and I'll just I'll say the ugly thing out loud, when a black woman with power really expresses herself in her full power, it makes people uncomfortable. And that is what she did. At 20 years old, she said, I am me, see me, I am all of me, good, bad, ugly, indifferent. And it made everyone uncomfortable. Yeah. And so she decided, guess what? I'm going to own it. And, you know, this Vogue spread, I, it's so notable for a, a couple of reasons for me. First of all, she said she did it because Serena Williams did I it, saw which that. is kind I of a that. flex in yeah. a certain way. Uh, but also, <laughs> but also, I mean, these, these young women's college basketball players, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, uh, you know, others, they are coming up in an era where they can now have endorsements. Yeah. They can be famous. Sure. People know their name. Yeah. This is a different moment. Well, these, well, first of all, in the WNBA, she will make less money in terms of all the money in which she made. She made over $2 million in name, Stop image, and likeness. She's I can't, the highest I can't take NIL. It anymore. I can't take it. I, I can't, I, I can't listen to. Uh, I don't want to call names, but I just, uh, it's fingernails on a chalkboard. When black women express their full power, people are uncomfortable. When people act like an idiot in sports, they get criticized. So I just want to, I wish the host had asked Kari Champion, because again, we don't challenge each other, but so... Emmanuel Acho, according to Kari Champion, who used to work for ESPN, Emmanuel Acho should have called Angel Reese and had a personal conversation with her rather than do his job and provide commentary off of on her public behavior. So did Kari Champion not just go on CNN and talk about Emmanuel Acho, or did she call Emmanuel Acho and have a private conversation with him? And so when Kari Champion was on ESPN, did anybody that she criticized as the host of First Take or on any show she was on, did she call all of them and say, hey, let me have a personal conversation? Or did she go on television and say what the hell she wanted to say and told them to deal with the consequences. But Emmanuel Acho, we, we have this special little bubble that we're gonna put Emmanuel Acho in because you know we like uh, Angel Reese or in protection of black women that you must call a black woman that they all decide they like and get their permission or have private conversations, but you cannot talk about them publicly. That's the standard they're trying to set. They want to put a certain group of people that they believe are in need of protection, whether it be Colin Kaepernick or Angel Reese, put a bubble around them and make everybody think, before you say anything about them, you better call and have a private conversation, which is really don't talk about them. They exist in our little protective bubble and they can do anything. If Angel Reese decides to rob a bank, we better call her beforehand and have a conversation. Why'd you rob that bank, Angel? Oh, you were hungry? This is insanity. This will not work. This is a group of people 
that want to establish there are no standards for us. We cannot be publicly talked about. They want to move into the untouchable group. We have no standards. Anything you do to us is racism or anti-Semitism or whatever we decide. Don't talk about us. We're untouchable. Oh, this is an Acho you folded. <laughs> sad, man. It, it, it's sad. The, the level, because a lot of this, when you connect all the dots, a lot of this, much of this is connected to their unabated racism towards Caitlin Clark. That, that, that's, that, that's, that's all this is, is racism towards Caitlin Clark. These, I, 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 <clears throat> let me, I'm gonna transition here and talk a little bit about Caitlin Clark and then we're gonna move on to Steve Kim, bring him into the conversation. But uh, guys, I wanna talk to you about our great friends at Good Ranchers. You know what the real March Madness is? Trying to find quality, affordable American meat at the grocery store these days. That's why I get all my meat delivered from Good Ranchers. They're the number one American meat delivery in the United States, bringing 100% American beef, chicken, pork, and wild-caught seafood to your door. Let's be honest. When you go to the store, you end up parking a mile away. You get a can't, you, <coughs> you get a cart with only one non-squeaky wheel, and then you settle for low-quality, overpriced cuts that are in those gross styrofoam packages. Stop the meat madness with March Meatness at GoodRanchers.com. Right now, during their March Meatness event, Good Ranchers is offering you free jumbo chicken wings for a year with any subscription. Make delicious dinners, game time favorites, and grill out staples with the two pounds of free wings you'll get in each box when you subscribe. Claim your $150 value of free wings plus an additional $20 off with my code FEARLESS when you subscribe at GoodRanchers.com today. They take the ick out of chicken. How? Every piece comes from no antibiotics ever programmed that guarantees it's never given antibiotics or added hormones at any point. That's what I really love about Good Ranchers, their commitment to transparency. They believe that you have the right to know exactly what's in your food. They're amazing supporters of this show, so go support them and take the mystery out of all the meats you buy. Go to GoodRanchers.com and use my promo code FEARLESS to get your free wings for a year and $20 off and free shipping today with your subscription. You will receive $20 off with my code with a one-time purchase. That's GoodRanchers.com, promo code FEARLESS to enjoy March meatness savings. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. I wanna circle back <coughs> to Caitlin, or I wanna pivot to uh, Caitlin and all the people running around right now praying that, oh, please, Paige Becker, take out Caitlin Clark. We hate Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark, she's got white privilege, and Iowa is you know, basically, basically an all-white team except for that Stokey girl, and I don't know why that Stokey went there. And, oh, my God, we just got to get rid of Caitlin Clark. Everybody's praying for the collapse of Caitlin Clark tonight. Not everybody, but there's a large segment of the media public, the media establishment. And, and they particularly needed to happen tonight because of Paige Becker would be their dream scenario. Because if Iowa loses to South Carolina, the undefeated number one team, it's not as big a deal. But if they lose to a three seed UConn with a diminished lineup, everybody can go to their, their, their desperate argument now is, Caitlin Clark's not the greatest because she hadn't won a championship. That's the new mantra of all the Caitlin Clark haters. And it's from people you really wouldn't expect. Like Rebecca Lobo. I want to play you this clip of Rebecca Lobo making some ridiculous argument that Caitlin Clark has to win multiple national championships to be considered a goal. Play the clip. I'll tell you, for me, she is the best offensive player that I have, uh, I have ever seen, at least in the last 30 years that I have been either playing or calling uh, women's college basketball games. When you get into the GOAT conversation, does she need to win a national championship in order to be considered the GOAT? I don't think so. I think she needs to win multiple national championships to be in that kind of a conversation. Because when you look at the history of the game, 
You know, Candace Parker won two championships at Tennessee. Diana Taurasi won three championships at UConn. And what was kind of unique about Taurasi, her sophomore year when she won her first championship, she was surrounded by four players who all went on to be WNBA All-Stars. They all graduated. Then she had a new cast of characters around her. She was able to win two more championships. Brianna Stewart won four national championships. Not only won four championships, she was the most outstanding performer in four Final Fours. Caitlin has, is an incredible player. She has done more in terms of bringing attention and eyeballs to the women's game than any player we have ever seen. That's a mere fact. But when you want to talk about the GOAT conversation and you add championships to the mix, you have to understand the history of the game. Yeah, and Rebecca, let's put the whole history of the game in context. And I get that UConn won 11 national championships, and I get you played for UConn, and you're a part of that dynasty. But let, let's put the whole thing in context. Women's college basketball is just now maturing, coming into its mature age, where there's more talent spread out. It, it, it used to be, and it still is to some degree, if you were a number one seed in the women's bracket, you were going to reach the Final Four pretty much 75% of the time because the talent wasn't spread out equally. There was only a handful of teams that actually had a chance to win a national championship. Iowa is like a decent program, but Caitlin Clark has made it great. They just went to back-to-back -back Final Fours. If someone had told Caitlin Clark her freshman year, if someone had said, you know what, Caitlin Clark's going to lead Iowa to back-to-back -to -back Final Fours and potentially back-to-back -back national title games, people, I know that no way that'll happen. Iowa's not a powerhouse. That would only happen at a UConn or a South Carolina or a Stanford or Tennessee under Pat Summit. So all this, oh, well, son, so they won four titles in a row, surrounded by a bunch of other great players. But Rebecca Lobo, UConn grad. You know who else is a UConn grad? Molly Karam. And so Molly Karam's sitting on ESPN. I want to play this clip of, you know, talk, them overhyping this Paige Beckers. Who, hell of a player but had a knee injury, she ain't on Caitlin Clark's level, and y'all need to cut it out. She's just not, and I don't care what happens tonight. She can outscore Caitlin, Caitlin can have an off night and not play well, and they can lose and Paige Becker, but she ain't on Caitlin's level, period. End of story. Everybody knows it with a pair of eyes, but here's Molly Carroll. Uh, all I gotta say is she's lucky this UConn team isn't healthy. And that's a true statement. That's not. That's wrong, Molly. Monica. That's wrong, Molly. Like Molly, it's five excuses. Five top players, it's excuses, am I right? Molly. It's Major excuses. Major injuries. You would not be saying that if it wasn't UConn. Major stars not playing. Listen, the, I, I'm among them this year that I was like, oh, UConn not the UConn of old. And here they are. So... But I'm just saying, she mind. wouldn't be bringing that up if we're, that's not what's that's what's unfair hey. about Hoggy. Molly would not be bringing oh. that up if it were not UConn. Dog will but holler. Baby, you understand? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Is Paige Beckett big time? She's big She's time. spectacular, right? You know what? Excuse we me. Go. It's her against Caitlin Clark. Stephen A. Ain't no excuses. Stephen A. You got there. No, no, want to hear that now. Stephen A. Let me tell you, if, if Georgetown Becker... gets back in the mix, I'm gonna be insufferable. I'm just telling you that now. What? If Georgetown gets back in the mix on the men's or women's side, I will be insufferable. Okay, so you think Molly? If Paige Becker's in basically missed two seasons. I don't know if we'd be talking Come about Caitlin Clark the way we are now. And it that's was, facts, and it, Stephen And to a. that point, it was the two of them. Rook, I, said the well, I said that well, the other day. I said that the other day. Well, I was out of the country. I'm just saying, don't bring Ooh, up so now I that they could be the roster. Area. They got to the Final Four. Don't bring gotta it up. got to go to break. I, I'm going to tell you why they're all rooting for Paige Beckers tonight. All the, and, and, yeah, all the, this alphabet mafia. BLM, LGBTQ, the whole, the Alphabet Mafia. They love Paige Becker. I want to play you Paige Becker a couple of years ago, her ESPY speech when she was named uh, the Player of the Year. Uh, th this is what Paige Becker has done that Caitlin Clark hasn't done so far. And I'm holding my breath and praying to God she never does it. But le let's listen to Paige Becker give this woke ass speech at the ESPYs. With the light that I have now, um, as a white woman who leads a black-led sport um, and celebrated here, I want to show a light on black women. Um, they don't get the media coverage that they deserve. Um, 
They've given so much to this sport and the community and society as a whole, and their value is un undeniable. Um, and in the WNBA, last season, the postseason awards, 80% of the winners were black, but they got half the amount of coverage as the white athletes. So I think it's time for change. Um, sports media holds the key to storylines. Spor sports media and sponsors tell us who is valuable, and you have told the world that I matter today, and everyone who voted, thank you. Um, but I think we should use this power together to also celebrate black women. So to Maria Taylor, Robin Roberts, Maya Moore, Odyssey Alexander, to all the incredible black women in my life, on my teams, to Breonna Taylor and all the lives lost, and to those names who have not yet learned, but I hope to share, I stand behind you and I will continue to follow, follow you and follow your lead and fight for you guys. So I just want to say thank you for everything. That's why they love Paige Beckers. Alphabet Mafia through and through. And that's why they're rooting for Caitlin Clark to collapse tonight, not make it to the championship game. And that's why they've set up this ridiculous stare. If she doesn't win a championship, she's not the GOAT. They can't wait to rip this woman down. And, and we haven't heard Caitlin Clark do any whining. If she loses tonight, she won't do any whining. She won't talk about the Instagram, the nasty Instagram messages she gets or the nasty Twitter messages she get because she gets them. She, she won't put herself, oh God, feel sorry for me. I've been sexualized. I've been uh, received death threats. She won't do it. I don't think, I hope not. She's going to celebrate Lisa Bluter and her teammates and Iowa fans, win or lose. That's what you'll hear from Caitlin Clark tonight. Iowa fans, her teammates, her coach, the community that supported her, she'll be thankful and express gratitude. Angel Reese uh, makes $2 million for getting some rebounds and putbacks, but all she wants to do is complain. No gratitude. And then got a whole bunch of sycophants and groupies and, and simps running around uh, caping up for her. And um, it, it, the caping up from a lot of these dudes at this point and, and some of these women, I'm like, hey, what, what's, what's really going on here? What's the agenda? Are, are y'all on Angel Reese's uh, Instagram page looking at these bikini shots hoping to get in line? I'm just keeping it real. That, that's, that's how it comes across to me. But <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to bring in Steve Kim. We're going to discuss this, a couple more things, and uh, get you off to enjoying the basketball tonight. I know the first game really doesn't matter. Uh, good luck watching that. I, I'm going to try to watch it in the background, but I, the, the, the tats and the weaves and all that, it's just too much for me. Anyway, Steve Kim next. Hello, Fearless Army. I'm Jason Whitlock, your leader. I'm going to spend 2024 discussing growth and sacrifice. Hard times are here. Harder times are coming. What has stopped American growth and caused a regression in fundamental freedoms and values? A lack of sacrifice. Our ancestors sacrificed for our benefit. We have not sacrificed to protect the progress they died for. No sacrifice no freedom. What impedes man's willingness to sacrifice? His ignorance, his perversion, his pride, his ingratitude, and his cowardice, his rejection of God. The Bible is a story about the power and the necessity of sacrifice. Sacrifice is the sun, rain, and fertilizer of growth. Growth is our life purpose. Grow in the knowledge, wisdom, fear, obedience, and reverence to the most high. Growth requires sacrifice will be our theme for Roll Call 2.0 this summer, June 1, right back here in Nashville. We're excited to welcome you. Let me spend a minute explaining what G-R-O-W-T-H actually stands for, for us in the Fearless Army. The G is for game plan. In order to properly grow, it's essential 
we work from the strategic game plan spelled out in the Bible. The R, responsibility. As we grow as men, we understand and accept our responsibilities to God, family, and teammates. The O, ownership. We embrace ownership of our destiny. Outsiders do not determine our fate. The W, wisdom. We honor, value, and share the wisdom imparted to us by elders, coaches, and leaders. The T, trust. We must be worthy of trust. The reliability of a man's word defines him far more than popularity and material possessions. The H, humility. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. That's straight from Proverbs 22 and four. Come join us in Nashville as we talk about growth and sacrifice and how without sacrifice, there will be no growth. Roll Call 2.0, right here in Nashville, Saturday, June 1st. Welcome back to Beef. As I walk you through uh, my top 50 media beefs of all time. Yeah, I'm an equal opportunity beefer. It's like, Randy, are you asleep at the wheel? Big lips are in style. I'd love to squash this beef. I mean, I was not real happy at all. I, I, I was less than thrilled. I was displeased. And now we have beef. All right, welcome back. Time for some Korean co-sales, Steve Kim. Steve, uh, I've been on a rampage. I think that uh, what I saw from Emmanuel Acho, the back pedal, oh. I, I mm. honestly think it's the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen oh. in sports media television. A am I over-exaggerating? I, I mean, when I think of backpedaling and playing off coverage, I always thought of Asante Samuels, senior. That was his thing, right? <laughs> Acho is now the prototype. He really is. And, and this is the thing that gets me about old Manny. Didn't Manny write a book called Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man? Now, the irony is he's unable or unwilling to have an uncomfortable conversation with a half a black woman. I, I don't get it. This, this, <laughs> this is something that I've noticed the last three to four years. Why are people not allowed to have dissenting opinions? Like, I'm being dead serious. Like, you go into any public forum or space or even private conversations, certain people in American society, and maybe it's worldwide, they believe that their opinion becomes gospel. And my view is this. Anything I say, there may be people who vehemently disagree. They may not like me. They may rip me. But at, it's all said and done, Jason. I'm not changing your mind. And I'm not changing mine ever. I'm going to stand up to my word and we can discuss it. We can argue. We could block each other. We can hate each other. But Emmanuel Acho literally said, I want to thank everyone for their reprimands. Who in the world thanks somebody for reprimanding them? It's another way of saying, and that's an old line, I think from Animal House. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Sad, Jason. Sad. The, the thing that's fascinating, Steve, and I don't know if you've seen, have you seen the clip of what James Jones and Shady McCoy said? Because Not yet, they, no. They said the, yeah, hold on, let's play that clip for yeah. Steve. They said the exact same thing, but, but there's been no blowback towards them. So clearly, they focused on Acho because they knew he was soft, but let's play the James Jones, Shady McCoy clip. And so, Steve, you know what you're talking about here. Play that clip. So for me, number one, when you did that, you brought all this attention to yourself, which is cool. Angel Reese has been a blessing to girls basketball. People she tune has. in to girls basketball to watch her. And she's brought a lot of eyes to women's basketball. Number one, by the way she plays, but number two, by the way she's been acting. It's more of that. And 
When you act like that, number one, people want to see you lose. True. Correct. When True. you act like that, it's Come some people that want to see you win, but most most of the people want, to see, want to see you lose. Thank you. I think about the Floyd Mayweathers. You were going to pay for his fight, but 90% of the people are paying for the fight to see him lose. lose. Thank you. Yes. To see because lose. the way he talked in, Preach, in James. interviews, because the way he showboated um, in, in the ring, all of that, people mm -hmm. wanted to see Floyd lose. So for me, Angel Reese has done so much for the game of basketball. But you have brought a lot of attention on yourself. After this game, if they would have won, Ooh, she would not have yeah. came out and Ooh, been crying yeah. at the podium like this. So for me, I feel like what? what you feeling, I don't care about you sharing it with the public. I just think this wasn't the right time because you've been such the villain. You can't jump up there right after the game and do this. Now, if you would have waited a couple weeks or whatever or did that with your teammates, your coach or whatever, that's all good. But you cannot be the super villain like they are saying, giving people L's, waving people bye-bye because you have brought that. You said in your own interviews, we dogs over here. This is how Send we do it in LSU. They right. do it in TikToks. They do it in all that. And I'm for it. But you got to be able to accept the and, and I think that this, comes with, especially after you lose I a game. I think all the attention that she's really getting is from the things that she's doing outside of basketball. She's a baller, because, though, too, though. I mean, I hear you, right? Yeah. But if, if I talked about Caitlyn or I talked about Juju, her, they games is on another level where they're going to do their own talking. So they got the same attention yeah. from their yeah. game compared to Angel Reese. More of hers is just the stuff that she's doing. Because she's a, I think she's a good player. I don't think she's nothing special like them other girls. Do we, can we all agree on that? Uh, she ain't Juju or Caitlyn. Ain't even close. Yeah. Ain't even, yeah. But what I'm saying, but she got the same amount of height. And yeah. why you think that Maybe is? More. Maybe more. You get what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying about her. And I will say this, though. So I don't know if we got another block or not, but can we go to that coach, the head coach? Mm. Or are we waiting to that? Wait, we'll get there. Okay. Hmm. So, hmm. they don't have okay. any smoke for Shady McCoy or James Jones. It's all Hold directed on. at Acho. Hold on. Confucius has a theory. I have a theory out of those three why Acho is being singled out. He's not considered an FBA. Isn't that a big thing in the community? <laughs> and the other two guys are Americans. Well, uh, Acho... He's a tether man, and the tether man cannot talk about the cloudy skies. And I, I, I think there's a difference. Yes, that because I've heard this a lot about Acho, that since he's a non-FBA tether, he doesn't have the license. I think that is a part of it. Uh, that's just my theory. I don't know if you agree or disagree, but Acho has now become a target. I don't know why. He was the one that did the uncomfortable conversations where he's grilling white people over, hey, why are you white? Never understood why that was so uncomfortable. <laughs> but I, I wish Acho would have said, look, I hear you. I respect your opinion. You're not changing my mind. We can agree to disagree. We can go out there and discuss it. But the way he just folded like a poker table at 2 a.m., I don't know how anyone ever takes him seriously anymore, Jason. Honestly, good. I don't know how you take him seriously. And, and, and look, when he first got on Speak for Yourself with Marcellus, I, 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 I just I thought he was disingenuous. And, and the, you know, the whole Oprah Winfrey thing made me uncomfortable. It's like, you know, just, just the whole root and lane he came up in, the whole uncomfortable conversation with white people. Nothing about those conversations was uncomfortable, and they were all misguided. This whole deal, this whole focus on, hey, if we just improve white people, things will be better for black people. It's crazy. It's just, if Steve Kim loses weight, Jason's cholesterol level is going to lower. No, it won't. I got to lower my cholesterol. <laughs> it's just crazy stuff. But I've seen him say some things and do some things here in the last six months, year, whatever. I'm like... My respect for Acho was growing, and when he oh. stepped out here with mild criticism of, of Angel Reese, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Good job, Acho. But to see him thank these guys for a public reprimand, and, and be, you know, he'll say, I didn't back up, I, I didn't apologize, I didn't blah, blah, blah. Man, you just look weak. And, and I do think some of this FBA stuff plays a role, but mostly I think with Matt Barnes and Ryan Clark, they was like, this dude's soft. We can get him. And they got him. Well, I, I think now he has been tamed. He's been neutered. Uh, that, that's the reality. He can't handle pushback. And, Jason, I'll go back to this again. 
two of the most powerful words when you're having a discussion and people are trying to bully you intellectually or in terms of your opinion, just say this, yeah, comma, and, because that usually freezes them. I I've told people in spaces, well, we disagree, right? They're like, yeah, and I go, good, we're allowed to. And then there's always like this really awkward silence <laughs> because people now expect, especially um, if you are white or white adjacent, that these people are going to back down off their opinion and appease you. Um, I'm not in the appeasement business. I'm not Neville Chamberlain. My opinion is my opinion, whether it's wrong or right. I've always said it is my honest thoughts. Uh, you have got to have some guts in this square when you have a platform to say, okay, I'm going to say things, but if you are in this to have everybody like you or agree with you, Jason, this ain't the racket you should be in. It's not, Steve. I want to transition, move on to uh, my contention that all these people now in the woke media, and that's a lot of them, they're mm -hmm. all on their knees tonight right now. Paige Becker, please bail us out. Yes. Please beat Caitlin Clark so that we can say that she's not the GOAT and we can criticize Caitlin Clark. I, I, I think all of the media is rigged this way. Before the last segment before you came on, I played a clip of Paige Becker at the ESPYs talking about basically saying, uh, I appreciate this award, but I wish you guys were giving it to black women. I, you know, as a white person playing in a black led sport, I just don't feel comfortable. And we need the media needs to do a better job of shining the light on black women. That's why they love her. She's bowed to the BLM, LGBTQ, Alphabet Mafia. Caitlin Clark hasn't. And so the whole, it's not just they want to see Caitlin destroyed, they want to uplift a Paige Becker and, and, and these other people. Anyway, I just think everybody's rooting for Caitlin Clark. Media is rooting, and fans are rooting for Caitlin Clark. The media is rooting for UConn and Paige Becker tonight. Yeah, you know, okay, Paige and Molly Kiram, I heard about what she said. Guys, you have the permanent invite to the cookout. You got it. It'll be like a Disneyland pass. You're invited. Forever and forever. You're, you're invited. Don't worry about it. Don't even have to bring the potato salad. You're good. But here's, I'm going to say something. Caitlin Clark should be thanked by everybody. Everyone should be at the altar of old CNC Jump Shot Factory and thanking her. Because the reality is that the only reason why, and I'm going to say not only, I would say at least half the reason why there's any interest in women's college basketball this year is because of that young lady from Iowa. And Jason, I'm going to give you credit. You get at least 10%. You, you've pushed this thing. You have pushed this thing like a <laughs> toboggan. You get 10%. And because I, I'm, I'm actually talking about it more than I have the past, I don't know, 50 years of my life. You know, so I, I don't understand this. Caitlin Clark, when she leaves, the interest will go back down to normal levels and it'll be the usual complaining of the perennial malcontents like Don Staley that we're going to focus in on. But there won't be any actual plays or games that we're going to talk about. It'll be about everything else but the game. So Caitlin Clark, to me, will be a once in a lifetime type of thing for college basketball. And I'm not so sure where this industry goes after she leaves Iowa City. Uh, back to oblivion and irrelevance and, yeah. you know, only Hopefully. super hardcore sports fans like me. I, I, I'm almost right there with you. I'm so upset with the blowback she's getting from the media that it's like, oh, I want y'all to get what y'all deserve. I want this whole sport to disappear again. And now you can go wow. run around and interview Don Staley. You can say you can go interview Don really? Staley and listen to her complain about BYU volleyball fans, and and <laughs> you know yeah. just have at it. Right about and, and it won't be anything about the games. There won't be twelve million people watching. And I, I love all these people that are pretending like, oh, oh yeah, Angel Reese was a big part of the reason why. Yeah, people hate watched Angel Reese play against Caitlin Clark, but the rest of LSU games. People were watching to see LSU 
and what Kim Mulkey's wearing, and they were yeah. hate watching Kim Mulkey. But uh, the whole th- I, I, I'm so infuriated, by the way, uh, the media has mishandled a gift horse. A, a, she has gifted them relevance, and they, they're going to throw it away with their uncontrolled bigotry. Jason, I'm with you. I thought Kim Mulkey's um, fashion choices were more interesting than any LSU game. I'll be honest with you. I, I'd see a picture on Twitter, and I'd be, okay, I'm good. I got my share of women's LSU basketball for the month. But I, I also saw something else on CNN. Uh, Greg Foreman, I'm a big fan of his Black Conservative Perspective, just did a video earlier this morning that I watched before coming on this fine show. And he played an interview that Cherry Champion, I, I'm sure you remember her, had a we really it. good career. No, we played it. it, it okay, good. We played it earlier today. Yeah. I don't get this, this whole notion, well, she's only 21. She's a child. Hold on. All I ever hear about college athletes when they get paid, uh, when they get good things, well, they're 18. They're adults. They can even go into the army. They should be allowed to get paid because they're adults now, and they're women, and they're strong, and they're unapologetic. Suddenly now, 21's not old enough. So which is it? At age 21, is she old enough to fight wars and go into the military and take adult responsibilities, or is she just a child? This is the issue that I have with a lot of these individuals. They don't even know which side to stay on because they don't honestly argue the point. And that, that's the problem. And I, I think we have to stop b- backing down off on the other side of the spectrum. It's like, look, this is how we feel. We can either discuss it or not. It doesn't matter. But you're not changing my mind or you're certainly not altering my original public stance. All right, Steve, I want to transition into something I found incredibly humorous and enlightening and, and just telling. Uh, and it, it speaks to how far removed elites and politicians are from everyday Americans, from reality. Uh, they exist in a different world and they're faking everything. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, somehow got into a conversation uh, about the women's basketball tournaments, what everybody's talking about, and and she thinks <laughs> there were no women's brackets until 2022. You can't make this stuff up. How stupid what? these people are and how really? detached from reality. Yeah, you, let's play the clip of Kamala Harris. Oh, Do you know? Okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that? Women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022. Think about that and what that talk about progress, you know, better late than never, but progress and what that has done, because of course, when, you know, I had a bracket, I'm, it's not broken completely, but I won't talk <laughs> about my bracket. But you know what, just how we love, we love March Madness and even just now allowing the women to have brackets and what that does to encourage people to talk more about the women's teams, to watch them. Now they're being covered, you know, and and this is the reality. People used to say, oh, women's sports, who's interested? Well, if you can't see it, you won't be. But when you see it, you realize, oh, Steve, I'm going to translate. I, I know the mistake she made here, and I'm, I'm, being, I'm being dead serious. What she wanted to say was, and well, pay attention, what, women weren't allowed to have penises until just a couple of years ago. Leah Thomas, the pin swimmer, he was the first woman with a penis, and it wasn't allowed by the NCAA until 2022. That's what she meant to say. She just made it a little slip of the tongue. You know, Whitlock, I'm beginning to think (laughs) she spent about as much time focusing in on college basketball, specifically the women's game, as she does on the border. My God. Uh, Except the border's kind of important, but I I half expected her to say something like, you know, back in 1984, when I was at Howard listening to Snoop Dogg and NWA and The Chronic in 1984, um, I was wondering, my God, it's really unfair that the women, they just have to like do a round robin, that they have to do shirts and skins and pick out teams after you get to 12 points. 
I don't even know what to say. I, I felt sorry for the guy doing the interview because if you corrected her, that thing is not going to fly. That guy would just get banned from media. He'd get the Ocho treatment. I, I don't know what to say. This is, look, it's not an important thing because it's only a sport. It's just a bunch of bouncing basketballs. But it, it goes to the general cluelessness. And I hate to say this. No, actually, I don't. I'm proud to say it. Of this administration, they can't get anything right. Jeez. All right, you and I don't spend a lot of time talking politics on this show, but but I do want to. I, I sat there and watched this, and I really did go. Hold on, who is worse, Biden or Kamala? And mm. and I'm going. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can pick a side here. Who's more clues? Who's more detached? Again, Joe has cognitive issues, but even before he had the cognitive issues, he was always a bit clueless and said ridiculous things. But I cannot reach a conclusion on which of these guys is a bigger blunder or potential blooper anytime you put a mic in front of their face. Okay. Is it Kamala or Joe? Jason, I'm going to say this. If this administration... Up top was a movie, it'd be dumb and dumber. It really would be. And you're right. At least old Joseph, he's old. It's a weekend at Biden's. I get it. I don't even think he's running the country. I really don't. I think he's a symbol. He's a puppet. He's being propped up. So I don't even know if he's in charge. But I call it the administration. But again, if you go specifically to those two, taking away the other variables of age, gender, cognitive dissonance, all that. It's that old question, and I say it once in a while, what is worse, gonorrhea or syphilis? I'm not sure you want to have either, but I'm sure one is not quite as painful when you urinate as the other. I don't know. Neither is good. There's no right answer here, and there's no wrong answer, to be honest. Listen, I'm going to, I think I'm going to end up saying Biden is worse, mm. and, and here will be my justification. Most of the time that I see Joe Biden talking, he gets the assistance of a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. Virtually any time I see it, he's got a teleprompter and he's got a bunch of handlers around him. Most of the time when I see Kamala, Kamala talk, there's no prompter and everybody that's on her support staff has run for cover and is making sure they're out of camera <laughs> shot because they don't want to be responsible. So she's kind of left out there on her own and she messes things up. She doesn't have a prompter helping her. She doesn't have an earpiece in her ear with someone giving her tips. And, and then the other thing, that, that and I'm saying this, this is not a joke. I'm saying this in all seriousness. I can see what Kamala's value used to be. And, and I'm saying it in all seriousness. Kamala was a thriller. She was an attractive woman that yeah. Willie Brown swore by. And, and, and uh, I'm just, I'm just, and so I oh can boy. see what her value was and put, and look, maybe she still got some game as it relates to that. So, and I can find her value. She was attractive and for her age, she's still relatively attractive. And, you know, I think those tricks that she learned to, that got her tight with Willie Brown, got her tight with uh, Montel Williams. Yeah. Those things, those skills don't evaporate. They actually, you know, sometimes they get better over time. So, you know, she still has value. Well, yeah, they say experience matters. And yeah, that, that Montel Williams scene, I don't know what function that was. They were on a red carpet and they're taking pictures. Montel, Montel had two women on his side. I was like, what? A two for one? Oh, like Montel. No, I think one was his daughter. One I think one daughter. was his daughter, I think. Was it? Okay, I think. all right, all right. All right, all right. I was about to say he had more game than Jesus Shuttlesworth, but okay, that's his daughter. It's his daughter, <laughs> but, um, you know. By the way, so Montel Williams. Okay, not Sinbad, yeah. not even, okay, Montel Williams. All right, but I I just, <laughs> when, when, when you hear her talk, you're like, my God, we are one stroke or heart attack away from her being in charge. Oh, geez, a nightmare scenario, Jason. Nightmare. Steve, I'm going to let you go. I think we've milked this topic as far as I can go. We have. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, tomorrow oh, no. oh, I'm have God. a little special edition of Fearless Out, oh, and, and, and I'm going to connect some dots on 
uh, why I think something's going on with Joe Biden, where they're about to remove him, I think, from being a candidate in 2024. And, and we could end up with Kamala Harris no. as president for a very brief time. Well, for a very brief Jason, time. But you got to wait till tomorrow for me to unpack. I will. And Jason, one last thing. Is your Achilles okay? In your hamstring? Yeah, are, are they okay? Why? Because the way you yeah. jumped off the Caitlin Clark bandwagon earlier in the week was stunning. And the way you jumped back on, I'm thinking, man, you may have pulled your Achilles here. Now you're back on. Hold for one second. Hold, hold, hold for went. one. Don't, don't, don't. No, no, no. I'm not going to allow that kind of slander. I did oh, not what, what? jump off the Caitlin Clark bandwagon. I didn't. Really? You did. I did not. Really? You look like Bob Beeman no. on Monday. Were you crazy? You literally I did said, not. this what is I... why we need to root for LSU. And I'm like, okay, who hacked this account? What, what's happening here? And then the <laughs> next day, she's the greatest of all time. Oh, really? You flip-flop like a flapjack this week, Jason. That is shame. If I see you at the Iowa Hawkeyes National Championship Rally, should that destiny, I'm, I'm just telling you, you should be banned. You should be reprimanded I, seriously. I explained my support for Kim Mulkey and what I thought she represented and why I thought that LSU had a better chance at beating South Carolina. Uh, but I did not in any way jump off the Caitlin Clark bandwagon. Now, if you, a few weeks ago when I was upset about her yelling at the referees and we did a whole show about her being annoying, Ugh. that was me teetering for a minute. But her dad helped me out here. I'm back okay. on the Caitlin Clark bandwagon. But, uh, Steve, yeah, any, so stand you guys, by your hop Caitlin. in the comments. <laughs> yeah, hop in the comments. and I'm right on this. I never, No, no one thought no. I was jumping off the Caitlin Clark bandwagon. No. I'm her biggest supporter. I got to go, yeah. Steve. We'll play tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow.